بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم look after your family who are perhaps disabled and that is your paradise but if you want to jump off the boat at that stage you just lost out like some people they have a child who is disabled they give the child up for adoption that's it go adoption why you just jumped off the boat allah gave you a chance to earn paradise through serving your child who is perhaps challenged or disabled and all you did is you jumped off the boat by giving the child away that's it i'm gone i'm no more on the scene why because the child is disabled well allah says we gave you the chance to get paradise just by serving the child you refused to do it well you gave that opportunity to someone else the child will still be looked after by another and i want to give those who have these type of children a word that will be a word of goodness do you know that not only paradise but even in this world sometimes when allah blesses you with such a challenged child allah opens other doors for you many other doors so your sustenance increased your business started doing well you might you might be struggling to actually look after your child but some other things happened it brought husband and wife closer together and you were not close so close before that some other things happened and this is why read surah to sharh what is surah to sharh alam nashrah lak sadrak wa wada'na anka wizrak alladhi anqada dhahrak wa rafa'na lak dhikrak فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانصَب وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَارْغَب Haven't we heard the surah so many times? It's repeated in salah and we know it off by heart. When we were young, we learnt it. The problem is we did not go through its meaning. That's the problem. That's a hardship on its own. I want to take from it two verses. Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا I've read a research just on these verses. A research. What was the research all about? Talking about the meaning of it. What exactly does it mean? And I've always preferred the translation of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. Beautiful. But let me give you. Usrun in the Arabic language means hardship and Yusrun means ease. So the, the difference is just an Ayn, Usr and Yusr. Usr means hardship and Yusr means ease. So the distance between hardship and ease is the distance between the Ayn and the Ya. That's it. After hardship, there has to be ease. When a person's terminally ill and they've passed away, what do people say? He's at peace now, right? He's no more suffering. That's a fact. He's at peace. It had to come. There was a breaking point at some stage. It had to come. Or they had to get cured. So that hardship and this ease, the relationship between the two, Allah says, indeed, with the hardship is ease. And he says it again. He didn't just say it once. He says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا So indeed, with hardship, with the hardship, there is ease. إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا He says it again. And indeed, with the hardship, there is ease. Those of you who know the Arabic language, and those of you who are experts in what is called Nahu, Nahu is the linguistic rules and regulations of the Arabic language. Anyone who's an expert in that will tell you that these verses are amazing. They have deep meaning because Alif and Lam. Now I'm sure most of us would actually understand what that means. Alif, these are letters in the Arabic language. Alif and Lam. A -l -l. That Al has so many meanings in Arabic. So many meanings. So when Allah says Al-Usr, it means in English we just say the difficulty, the hardship. 
But that the in the Arabic language actually refers to something. Sometimes it's talking about all hardship, all hardship. It is called listigraq al jins, that which actually includes everything of its kind. When you say annas, you are talking of all the people. So it's not the people, all the people. That's Arabic language. So in this verse, Allah said al usr. It could mean all the difficulty, but the the linguistic experts say no. It's talking of the difficulty. Why? For a reason. Allah says, with the difficulty, there is ease. Sometimes that Alif and Lam actually refers to something specific that people know. Lil Ahd. It's called Al Ahd. Al Ahd means something you know about. I'm talking about, if I say, give me a book, you don't know the book. But if I say, give me the book, between you and me, you know which book I'm talking about. And if you don't, you'll say, which book? I'll say, the book. Say, which book? Then you give me the title of the book. I expected you to know because we are close. We were talking about a book. Now that we were talking about the book, I'm telling you, give me the book. Without batting an eyelid, you give me a specific book. The people watching know that between you and I, we were talking about some specific book. I used T-H-E to refer to a specific book. So in the Arabic language, when you said Al-Usr, you, you could be referring to something that people know about. But in that verse, in that context, Allah has not yet spoken about something. So when I say the book, people need to ask, well, what book? When I say the hardship, people might ask, what hardship? So Allah says, wait, he repeated the same verse again, because when Allah said, with the hardship, there is ease. And then he said, Inna ma al -usri yusran. And with the hardship, now which hardship are you talking about? The one we just spoke about now, there is ease, which means with the same hardship, there are two points of ease. Wow, subhanallah. Now, do you get what it means? Indeed, with the hardship, there is ease. Indeed, with the same hardship we were talking about in the previous verse, there is another ease. Which means, if I add those two verses together, it means with every hardship, there are two points of ease. What are the two points of ease? One is Allah will create ease for you. Now, this is another tafsir. This is a third tafsir. Allah creates ease for you in the dunya and Allah creates ease for you in the hereafter. It's included in the meaning. But I still prefer that which Abdullah ibn Abbas said, radiallahu anhumah. He says, this verse is speaking about two points of ease with the same hardship. Subhanallah. And this gives me a lot of courage and a lot of encouragement. It actually boosts me in so many different ways. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So those who are going through hardship, don't worry. Ya fari, ya sahib al hammi, inna al hamma munfariju, abshir bi khayrin fa inna al farij allahu, ida bulita fa thik billahi warda bihi, inna al ladi yakshifu al balwa, hu allahu. Oh, you who is going through hardship, difficulty, worry, concern, don't worry. That worry is actually that concern, that hardship is going to go. It has to go. For indeed, the one who will cause it to go is Allah. Give, be a person who has glad tidings. Get the good news of goodness that is going to follow. For indeed, Allah will alleviate your suffering. Have hope in Allah. Don't lose hope in Allah. Keep on making dua a day, two days, three days. I know of someone who was in their 30s, mid 30s, not married, a female. And she was a person who said, I wanted to get married at 16. That's how forward I was looking to having a husband. Double that age, still not married. And I'm making dua from the age of 10, 12. Oh Allah, get me married. Oh Allah, get me married. Oh Allah, I want to get married. Make it easy for me. May, and it just didn't come. So there are some types of people, some lose hope, they stop making dua and that's it, they can. And some continue making dua. They have hope. She says, when I was 36 years old, 36 years old, I got married to the prince of my dreams. Can happen. 
Subhanallah. You might have lost how many years? 20 years. But you still got prints of your dreams. Alhamdulillah. Some of us stopped dreaming. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all the princes and the kings and the queens and the princesses of our spouses. Imagine if you had to refer to your spouse, how would you refer to your spouse? Anyone here would call their wife uh, princess of my dreams? The men are just looking at each other. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Subhanallah. I know one young man says, well, if you want me to call her the princess, I first need to be the prince, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Remember, the Quran is filled with beautiful verses. Read the words of Allah. They will bring comfort to the heart. Read the words of Allah. Read the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will help you through any hardship, through every hardship. Read his lifestyle, his biography. Go through the stories of the prophets. Go through the stories of the companions. See what you learn. It will help you through your difficulty. If you increase your dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, Allah says, indeed, it is with the remembrance of Allah that the hearts become calm. The hearts are collected, calmed down. So remember Allah often. Turn to Allah, for indeed He is the one who will help you.